Gone are the days where you need to dedicate years of your life to learning photo editing software. The barrier to entry has just been lowered and thanks to AI, things have got a lot easier. Enter Luminar Neo. Now Luminar Neo are the sponsors of this video. They reached out and said, you wanna try it, see what you think, and if you like it, you can tell everyone about it. And I did like it, so I am telling you about it. Now this video is not aimed at the professional, the person already making a living from the photography. It's aimed at the hobbyist, the person that does it because they want to, because it's fun. The point of this video is to show you how ridiculously easy and intuitive this software is to use for anyone of any ability. I've got three photos I'm gonna edit and they're conveniently in a folder that I've prepared earlier. Organization. Now important photos in Illuminar Neo is as simple as dragging them in. So I've got a folder here with three images in, conveniently. Conveniently. I'm gonna drag them in and that's it. The first photo that I'm gonna show you is this one. Now we've all been there before and I know a lot of viewers of this channel are in a similar boat to me where they've got camper vans and that kind of thing and they travel a lot. Now, you go to a spot you've looked forward to for absolutely months, sometimes years, you get there and the day you're there, the weather's crap, dull, boring and the photos just don't look great. So what are you meant to do? Just not take the photographs? Of course not. You take the photographs and then you fix them in Luminar Neo and I'm gonna show you how. So this one, first off, what we're gonna do straight away is we're gonna to go to Enhance AI. Sky Enhancer, we'll put that on, I don't know, 50, let's say, and we'll go Accent AI, we'll do, we'll do 70. Already image looks less flat, less boring, and I've done nothing other than move two different sliders. That's how easy this program is. Next, if you've got a Sony camera like I have, you'll see things like this all over the place, which are basically called dust spots. It's bits of crap that gets into your camera and obviously shows up in the photos. So you click erase, we'll go remove dust spots, let the AI do its little magic thing, it finds it for you. You don't have to do it manually like you have to do in other software. Gone. That's it done the click of a button so we've done two things we've moved two sliders and pressed one button and already the image is a hell of a lot better now we're going to use relight ai next now this basically lets you change the foreground and background brightness individually just so you can sort of separate things out so what we're going to do brightness near we're going to pump that up to let's see if 40 and brightness far, we're also gonna pump that up to 20. And that just brightens up the foreground a lot more and obviously the background's a little bit brighter as well. And like I said previously, already you can see it's looking like a different image. And all I've done is three things now, piece of cake. Now, just like most photo editing software, this has presets in where you can change the colors of your image without having to mess on too much yourself. Personally, I prefer doing it a slightly different way. I prefer using the mood tool, which is on the right hand side, a little bit further down. Now, these LUTs are essentially like Instagram filters. You've got different colors and all the rest of it, and it'll change your image. Literally look through them, and you can see which one you like the most. You click the one you like the most, and then that's that done. And just like Instagram, there's certain ones what you'll just have that's kind of your favorite. You'll use it a lot, and for me, Especially for this picture, it's Tokyo. It's got that nice blueness in the sky and the darker colors and then a the slight yellowness to the highlights, which gives it a quite a moody Scottish feel. And already, after three different adjustments, the picture is like a completely different picture. I would now share this on Instagram where I wouldn't have previously because it was just gray and flat and horrible. A lot of people get a little bit tied up when they're editing stuff. They'll change something that they're not that keen on later down the line and now they don't know how to take it all off and remove them bits that they've done. In this software, there's none of that. You literally click on the edits tab at the top right and then it's got all of the adjustments that you've made. You can either see what they look like on or off by clicking that or you can just remove that altogether. If you don't like it anymore, you can take that thing that you've done and get rid of it without having to sort of control and Z and undo everything else that you've done in between. Then you just get rid of the one thing that you've done. And you can see on this edit, we've done four different things and that's that and it's looking great already. So anyway, now that's that one fixed, but what about days when the sky's boring, blue, there's nothing in it and you want it to look a little bit better than that? Well, that's easy and it's literally one button yet again. So let's have a look at the next image. This image is of the kids. We were on our way down to Durham and I snapped it and I liked the photo, but it's a little bit boring. There's nothing at all going on in the sky and that's what I'm here to fix and I'll show you how to do it. In the edit tab, just underneath the Enhance AI, there's a button that's called Sky AI. Now this is mental. We'll go to Sky Selection. We're gonna go down to Bright Blue Sky and then we'll pick this one. You click the button, you wait 
a few seconds while it figures out where everything else is in the picture and then bang, done. You've got a completely different sky. There's other skies as well. I like this one because it kind of, you've got leaning lines one way and then the sky's got leaning lines going the other way and it just looks great. What you then need to do, or what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna adjust the sky a little bit because it's a little bit warm for me, for the image. The image is a little bit cooler and it's not quite bright enough to match the rest of it. But that's it. Slightly adjust two sliders. Now we've got a completely different sky in an image that was previously just a blue sky, nothing in it whatsoever. Now I'm pretty happy with this image already. I've got a relatively nice shallow depth of field in the background, that's blurry. The foreground's not really that blurry, but I wanna make it a little bit more blurry and that's where Portrait Bokeh AI comes in. The Portrait Bokeh AI again is just down on the right hand side. You click on that and then it's just a matter of moving a slider. So we're gonna go pretty high on this one. We'll go up to say 80 and you'll see straight away that the background is now more blurry and the foreground is a little bit more blurry as well and if I look over here you can see what it's actually masked out so the red which is obviously the kids the AI has figured out that that's obviously the subject of the photo so we're not going to mess on with that because you'll not want that bit blurry so we'll just blur the other stuff so that's two different things we've done to this image and already it's miles better now what if you want to add I don't know some sort of like lens flare or just something that just brings out a little bit more in the photo because again there's a lot of dead space in this one. Now if we go to the top left, click on layers, and we've got flares, light leaks, sparklers, starburst bokeh, there's more that you can get online as well, don't worry about that. But for this one, I think we can have a look at that. Mm, a little bit too much, so we'll m remove that one. And then, yes, we'll go with that one. Now all of these layers as well that you add, you can change the opacity of them. So that is a little bit too much for me. I'm gonna drop that down to, we'll go 50%, that's it. Looks great already. Now next, I wanna crop the photo in a little bit, but sometimes you're not sure of the composition that you want to do. Like you took the photo and you think, well, what else could you do with this? Now there's a composition AI, and what it'll do is it'll apply different compositions based on what it thinks looks best. And on this occasion, if I click on that and press enter, what it's done is it's given us a very sort of negative space photo, which I actually, really like. I like the way it's cropped this. It works quite well. You can see sort of, not so much where the kids have been, but where they're going, which is kind of what I was going for in this photograph anyway. Once you've messed on with it, you want to see what it was like before and where it is now and how far it's come. Sometimes in other software, there's different buttons on your keyboard. You've got to try and figure out where it is. On this one, you've got a nice little handy slider. Click the button on the bottom of the page, slide backwards and forwards, and you can see what it was like previously and what it's like now. And you can see off this one, it's a completely different image. And all I've done, if we go to edits, is I've done portrait bokeh, sky AI, and cropped it. That's it. And it's took us minutes. Absolutely great, perfect, easy to use. Anyone could do this. There's nothing technical about what I've done. I've messed on with a few sliders, clicked about three buttons. That is literally it. Now picture this, you're having a nice little walk along next to the pond, there's ducks everywhere, the swans, baby little cygnets were swimming around and then over in the field on the left, there was a storm cloud and a big rainbow that come right through a tree. So I got a photograph and I thought that's decent. I got home and what I hadn't noticed in that scene when I took the photograph, this is a big telephone wires. I just stretch all the way through the photograph like this and it just kills it. Now, yes, in other software, I can do it manually, I can. It's time consuming, but it can be done. But in Luminar Neo, it's literally a click of a button. And I'm gonna show you, watch this. So we're in Luminar, I'm gonna click on edit, take it into that, and we're gonna to go to erase. Now, you'll see where I clicked the remove dust spots button, there's also a remove power lines. Now, these aren't power lines, it's like a telephone cable thing, but it looks the same. So I'm gonna click that, and let's see what it does, and how effective it is, because these, absolutely ruined the photo for me. And already you can see the AI has figured out where they are and now they're not there, they're gone. And it's done an absolutely fantastic job of getting rid of that. You can also see in this image that yes, the rainbow's there, but you can't see it very well. So let's see how hard it is to make that visible. And to do that again, really, I think I'll just use Enhance AI again. I'm gonna click on Enhance AI and we're gonna to go to Sky Enhancer. We'll do that quite high for this one because it's mainly the sky where this detail is. So we're gonna to go to 75 for that one and then we'll go for Accent AI. We'll do 40. That's, 
you can see the lot already. Now, all I've done in the edit, if you look at this one, is enhance and the arrays, the power lines, and that's it. Absolutely piece of cake. Now, a lot of beginner photographers and hobbyists and all of that use something called clarity a lot of the time. And a lot of images where you bump it up and it makes everything look all quite crisp, but it actually just destroys the image. And that's what I love the most about Enhanced AI. I don't know how it does it. I don't know what sort of witchcraft it uses, but it doesn't actually destroy the quality of the image at all. Now, normally there's a thing on this software called Structure AI, which replicates quite heavily what other software does, which normally destructs the image. And this is an example of kind of how bad it can make things look a lot of the time. You turn that up and it just looks awful. That is in here as well. So you need to be careful with it. You need to use it as just tiny amounts because it can ruin your image. Enhance AI, I don't know how, I don't know what they've done, how it works. I don't even really know what it's really adjusting, but whatever it's adjusting works fantastic. I love it. Now when Luminar Neo reached out, I was like, mm, I've used other software for so long, there's not a chance I'm gonna use anything else, to be honest. But I thought, you know what, I'll give it a try. And then as I got the software and had a look, they've got HDR Merge, which is a pain normally, and that's in other software, but you get mixed results. There's also Focus Stacking now, which is absolutely fantastic. I've used that other software, it can be a little bit hit and miss, and depending on the image, there's sometimes little things in this one that you have to then tweak yourself to make it look perfect, but it's great. It. There's upscale AI, which means if you took a photo on your phone and then you print it, and sometimes you print it big, it just looks awful. Drag it into upscale AI times two, times four, times six, it makes it bigger, it gives it more detail, and it works absolutely strangely fantastically. And again, no idea how it does that, but it does, it works great. And what they've also released now is panorama stitching. So if you take loads of little photos out of a big scene on your DSLR, your mirrorless camera, and you need to make that into one big photo, again, this software can now do all of that as well. So it's not just for the beginner, it's not just for sliders and things like that. There's all the more advanced and professional features that are built into it as well now where you can do all them other things. But if you've been put off learning editing software in the past because it's complicated and all of that and you're just not sure how to use it, give Luminar Neo a try. It is the easiest piece of software that I've ever used. Within minutes of going on the software, I knew where everything was. I was blown away by all of the AI features that it has because it knows what we want without us having to manually do it all which for me is, well, that's better. I'm a little bit lazy, so I'm happy for AI to just do all the bits that I don't really wanna do. So thanks again, Luminar Neo, for sponsoring the video. I'm very impressed with your software. And like I say, for anyone that is looking for a nice, easy bit of photo editing software, give it a click in the link in the description, have a trial of it, see what you think, and then you can buy it if you like it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see yous in the next one.